Hi, my name is Kimberly from Zeeman Development. Today I'm going to give you a demonstration of Chimpigration Cloud, our integration between Razor's Edge NXT and MailChimp. Chimpigration Cloud comes as part of Chimpigration Pro, but you can also purchase it on its own as well if you prefer. The first time you use Chimpigration Cloud, you'll log into your dashboard and it will be empty. And as you start setting up processes, you'll see these cards appear on your dashboard showing you the data that's been transferred and the details referring to that. There are three main areas of Chimpigration Cloud, importing new records and updated records from MailChimp, exporting records from Razor's Edge NXT to your MailChimp audiences, and bringing in your campaign results from MailChimp into NXT as well. So let's take a look at these in turn. First of all, let's look at an export from Razor's Edge into our MailChimp audience. So we can either create a brand new process edit an existing one or copy an existing one. So let's take a, an edit of one that we've got set up already, our current member export. So you can see straight away that with our exports, we can either run these as a one-off process or as a scheduled recurring process. So you can set these up to run on a regular basis at a time to suit you. So when you're out of the office and it doesn't take up any of your time and people will automatically be exported into your MailChimp audience. We'll take a quick look at what that looks like and then I'll run it for you right now. So we choose the NXT list that we want to export from. We choose our MailChimp audience. When you click on the drop down, you can see all of those there. We choose the tags that we want to add and we can add more than one tag. We can add to our existing tags or replace the tags we've got with the ones here. And then we can set up our schedule. So we can choose a weekly, a daily or a monthly recurrence. We can choose the date that it should start, the time that the uh, export should run and the number of times. So we could say it recurs every two weeks on a Monday. It recurs every two weeks on a Monday and a Thursday. If we choose a daily basis, we could choose the time and, the, and every how many days it runs. And if we choose a monthly basis, then we can choose the dates and the months that that export should run on. In order to, that I can show you the functionality, we're going to turn off the scheduling for now and use an ad hoc process. So we can now select how we're going to match records between NXT and MailChimp. In MailChimp, users can't share an email address, but in Razor's Edge NXT, they can. So this allows you to determine whether or not we're matching on email address or we're matching on constituent ID. We've also got the option to match on email according to our duplicate email settings. This refers to an area of the settings of Chimp Migration Cloud that allows you to determine who is the main contact for an email address if people are sharing that email address. So we can use either an attribute or a custom field or a constituent code to determine a main contact. So for the now, I'm going to use that. And then we can set up our field mapping. So you'll see the MailChimp merge variables that you've got available on the left. And you can then choose the Razor's Edge field that matches to that. So for email address, we choose either, uh, we choose the primary email or the email. And then we choose the Razor's Edge field that we want to use. With the first name field, we choose the constituent area, and then we can select from the fields there and, and so on. And if we had postal addresses, we could choose the address area as well. And the idea there is that you're just not looking at all of the available Razor's Edge fields. We always need to map our email address because that's what MailChimp requires. And we always need to match up, map our constituent ID because that's what you'll need for other areas of Chimpigration Cloud when we're doing the matching. Before I hit done, let's take a quick look at my audience here. You can see there's currently zero subscribers. So let's say done. And those records are going to be sent off to MailChimp. So when we come back to our dashboard, we can see there's a new card on the dashboard showing our current member export and the details of what we've just processed. We can see that we've got 36 successfully exported records and two unsuccessful ones. And if we click on the details, it will show us every single record and uh, the email, the name, the status, if it's been successfully processed or not, and what's happened. So we can see this record's been subscribed, the merge fields have been added or updated, and so have the tags. Any unsuccessful records will show with the red triangle and we can see here this email address was not able to be validated by MailChimp. So let's take a look at that on our MailChimp account. So let's refresh this audience. 
and we can see our subscribers here with our active member tag added and all the details that we input as part of the export. So let's go back to the dashboard. Now, once you've exported your contacts to your audience, you've started sending them emails, then you're going to want to bring your campaign results back into Razor's Edge. So now we can select a campaign management process. So first of all, we're going to bring in some of the results from our campaign from everybody we sent the email to. So uh, we're going to bring in our rehoming animals. And, once, and now we've got some additional options here. We can do this as a one-off process or as a scheduled process, as we saw before. But we can also set up a real-time update, which happens as a user makes them as well. So let's have a look at a one-off process first of all. So we're going to retrieve our information from a specific campaign. We could also bring it in from a whole audience or from an automation campaign as well. The matching works in exactly the same way as we saw before. We can match on the email address for all constituents, on the person who we've marked the main contact, or on the constituent ID. And the, you might want to use the uh, for all constituents if you're working with, say, your bounces, so that you can get rid of any erroneous emails. But if you're working and or if you're getting everybody sent, you might want to mark that for everybody who has the email address. But if it was for an unsubscribe, you might only want to work with the primary contact. It's always up to you, but those options are always there. And now we can choose which data we're going to retrieve from MailChimp. So we've got hard and soft bounces, people who unsubscribed, people who marked as a spam, everyone sent and the opens and clicks. So that's the data that I'm going to retrieve. And then I can choose how to process it. So some of these are more relevant depending on the data you're bringing over. So for example, with your bounces, you might want to delete the email or change the email address type to former email. With your unsubscribes, you might want to mark them as do not email or mark it as inactive, or you might want to add a consent record. As ever, all of these choices are up to you. You can make sure that this fits in with your Razor's Edge NXT existing processes so that all your data aligns with what you've got already. Because I'm bringing in my everybody sent, I'm going to add an action. And when I click on enter action details, you can see that we're mimicking some of the fields you'd see in a global ad on Razor's Edge here. So we're going to add uh, the type of email. We're going to make it a solicitation. I'm going to use today's date. I'm going to give it a summary. I can add notes. I can add location. I'm marking it as completed and I can tick the completed checkbox and I can use the current date as well. I can now choose some custom fields for my opens and clicks. So I've got one called opens for the opens, one called clicks for the clicks. I can create one for my MailChimp campaign ID as well so that I can update this action at a later date rather than creating a duplicate if I get new open and click data. And I can also create a custom field for the MailChimp campaign name as well so we can see what the email was called that was sent out that's associated with this data. And then I've got the option to add any additional custom fields that I want to as well. So I can save that. And as you can see, I can perform more than one action on everybody who I sent the email to. Then when I click done, that information will be sent off once again. And as soon as that card appears on the dashboard, we can see that we've got successfully processed records, unsuccessful records, and we can again check the details. So we can see that we, this action has been updated or added where it's not been used before. We can click on any of these records and it will take us to their Razor's Edge record to see what's happened on that record. So let's take a look at this one. If we go down to the Actions tab, we can see that solicitation has been added. And if we open it up, we can see my note here. We've got the links that were clicked on, we've got the MailChimp campaign ID, the date it was opened, and we've got the name of the campaign as well. So we've got all of those details in Razor's Edge for us to use. Where it gets really interesting is when we can set up real-time actions and scheduled actions to free up our time from processing data in Chimpgration. So let's go back to the campaign management and I'll show you an existing real-time action that I've got set up for our unsubscribes. So now we've selected the real-time action here. We choose the audience to retrieve the data from. The matching is going to be exactly the same as we saw before. I'm choosing to match the email for all constituents. 
And now I'm getting my unsubscribe. So with the real-time actions, we have slightly different options. We can get our hard bounces, our unsubscribes, new subscribers, and people who mark us as spam. And then the process choices are exactly the same. So in this case, I'm gonna mark the email as do not email, and I'm going to add a consent record. When I create a consent record, I can add my channel and category as usual. I can add a date. And I can also choose what constitutes a matched con a consent record so I don't ever create a duplicate in my NXT. And then when I click done, this is going to be set up. Now, this time we're not going to see a new card appear on our screen, and that's because nobody's unsubscribed yet. And we're only going to see that card when somebody unsubscribes. We can see our activity on the left here that shows us that that's been edited but somebody has to unsubscribe for this to be triggered. So let's do that now. I've got a little script for my MailChimp audience that allows me to unsubscribe records. If I click on that, I've been removed from that audience. As soon as that's processed through MailChimp, that will be sent over to Chimpigration and I will automatically be unsubscribed on NXT as well. So let's go back to our dashboard. And here it is, we've got our new card, We've got one successfully processed unsubscribe. We can see the record here. Let's go and take a look. So we can see this email address has been marked as do not email as, as we required. And we've added this consent record as well. We can see I've got my opt out and the source is Chimpigration. So that's happened without me having to do anything other than the initial setup. And that will always happen for all of my unsubscribes. So I never need to worry about processing them in Razor's Edge again. The final thing I want to show you is the import from MailChimp to Razor's Edge. So this is great if you've got new signups, people signing up to your audiences, or if you've got people who are making changes to their profile in MailChimp, you can bring those into Razor's Edge and make sure that all your data is up, updated there as well. So let's take a look at importing our new signups. Once again, we've got the three options. We can either do this as an ad hoc process, scheduled, so it happens at a regular time, or we can do it on a real-time basis. So as soon as that person unsubscribes, they get added to Razor's Edge, or as soon as that person changes their data, that we can make those changes in Razor's Edge too. Once again, we select the audience to work with, the time frame to bring in changes from. So you might want to push this back a little bit further if you've got a, if a, a list with historic data in the matching as we saw previously, and the field mapping that we saw in the export works in the same way. So I've got uh, more fields available in this audience that I'm allowing people to update. So I've matched all of those over. We can see we've got the phone number, the address lines, and the email too. And then the final uh, tab here that we need to work with is the default value. So because we're creating records in Razor's Edge, we're going to need to meet our Razor's Edge requirements for a new record. That might be that new constituents need a constituent code. We can also add that to existing records and the same with the custom fields too. I'll show you what I've set up here. I've got my constituent code of friend with a start date for every new record. And I've got a custom field with the origin for MailChimp as well. Because I've selected to work with a postal address, I also need to select an address type. So I've chosen the address type of home. And you can add any other fields that might be required here as well, so that you can make sure any records being created in NXT adhere to your Razor's Edge rules. So that's done. And once again, as soon as we have brought in those new records, they'll appear on our dashboard. So here are our new signups. We've got four new records. Let's take a look. So we can see um, the records that have been updated, their email has been updated, and we've got a brand new constituent that's been created here. So his email has been added, his constituent code and his custom field, and we've sent his constituent ID over to MailChimp as well. So the next time we run this process, we'll be able to find him much more easily using that. So let's take a look at that new record we've created. So we can see we've, we've got uh, this person's name, we've got any postal address information given to us, the email address has been added, we've got our default constituent code here of friend and the date, and we've got the custom field of origin and showing as MailChimp too. So that Razor's Edge record is now set up and ready to go. So that's how Chimpigration Cloud for NXT works in our dashboard. The final thing I want to show you is our custom tile in NXT. 
So Chimp Aggression View allows anyone with an NXT account to see a constituent's activity in MailChimp without having to be able to have access to MailChimp itself and without being able to edit any of that information. We activate the tile and click on any email address. And then we can see that person's activity directly from the NXT record. So we can see my unsubscribe here. We can see anything I've opened and clicked on and we can filter by the activity type as well. So we could just look at my opens and we could just look at a specific audience as well. So we can really drill down into the data that's important to this person. And that's really useful if you've got people who are answering the phone to your donors or people who are going out to meet with people and they want to see what might have been sent to that person before they have a conversation. This will be ideal to add to their Razor's Edge NXT. I hope that's been useful. As I mentioned before, please do take a look at our Chimpigration Pro demo as well. Chimpigration Cloud and Pro form one whole product, but of course you can purchase Chimpigration Cloud alone as well. Thanks for listening.